Okay, so what I want you to do with this, I gave you the equation of a parabola, x squared plus 2x minus 8. I wanted you to, to uh, plot the points g of negative 5, g of 1, and graph the entire function. Okay, um, then I wanted you to draw a line through those two specific points. That's what we call the secant line. We've talked about this several times. Okay, secant line goes through any two points on a curve. Um, and then, before you did anything else, I wanted you to estimate where you thought the slope of the tangent line was the same as the slope of the secant line, okay? Now, that's kind of due to your perception. Some of you may have gotten closer, some of you may not have gotten as close. Um, but then I wanted you to actually calculate the slope of the secant line. I think it was negative 2 was the actual slope between g of negative 5 and g of 1. Then when you take the derivative, you get 2x plus 2. And then I wanted you to find the x value where g prime of x is the same as the slope of the secant line. So if the slope of the secant line is negative 2 and the tangent line equation, or excuse me, our derivative is 2x plus 2, okay, that the derivative gives us the slope of the tangent line. We want to know when it's equal to negative 2. So when we solve, we find out that that occurs at x equals negative 2. Um, so hopefully you could kind of see that on the graph that you had. Not a good axis. Your function looks something like this. Okay. Um, so we have the secant line going on right here. And at negative 2, I didn't draw my graph very well, but at negative 2... <coughs> the tangent line is parallel to that secant line. It has the same slope, okay, at x equals negative 2. That's what I wanted you to get from this exercise. So it turns out that this has this concept has a name. This is called the mean value theorem, okay, the mean value theorem. Now, it's not because it's not me or that it's mean and not nice, okay. Um, it's because it's the average. It's kind of like the idea of the average, okay. Um, anytime you see mean in calculus, you should be thinking average, okay? Um, first of all, just like with all of our other value theorems, your function has to be continuous on your interval, and it has to be differentiable on the interval. Those are the first two things you should always check. Are there any holes? Are there any vertical asymptotes? Are we undefined anywhere on this interval? Um, do we have any sharp points? Do we have any vertical tangent lines? Anything like that we need to check for first. If those two things were true, then according to the mean value theorem, there has to be a number in that interval where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the ten, uh, secant line. Okay? F prime of C is equal to F of B minus F of A over B minus A. The derivative at C is equal to the slope of the secant line, or the slope of the tangent line at C is equal to the slope of the secant line. So our function is f of x is equal to 5 minus 4 over x. Okay, now just because of typing this in, really this is what it would look like. Okay, 5 minus 4 over x. <clears throat> we want to find all values of c in the interval between 1 and 4, such that f prime of c is equal to f of 4 minus f of 1 over 4 minus 1. Okay, it's just telling us find what satisfies the mean value here. Okay. So first of all, it's pretty much assumed that we can apply the mean value theorem since they're telling us to do this, uh, but let's still be in the habit of checking continuity and checking differentiability. Now this is a rational function, okay? Remember rational functions, when x is in the denominator, we're concerned about that being zero. So obviously this would occur at x equals zero. This function is not continuous at x equals zero. However, x equals zero is not in our interval, so it's not a problem. Okay, so your function can have discontinuities just so they're not in the interval that you're looking at. Okay, so it's continuous on the interval, so we're good. Uh, it doesn't have any sharp points or anything like that either. So we can proceed. 
Let's go ahead and find f of 4 minus f of 1. So we need to plug in 4 into our function and 1. So when we plug in 4, we get 5 minus 1. So that gives us 4. And when we plug in 1, that gives us 5 minus 4, which is 1. That's pretty interesting. So we are looking for where f prime of c is equal to 4 minus 1 over 4 minus 1, which would be 1. So, let's take the derivative. f prime of x, the derivative of 5 is 0. The derivative of negative 4 over x would be positive 4 over x squared. I kind of skipped some steps there, but I think we're getting used to that one. All right, that would be 4 to the negative 1, or excuse me, 4x to the negative 1. So bring down the negative 1, it makes a positive. Track 1 from the negative 1, x to the negative 2 puts it in the denominator. Okay, so that's our derivative. The question is, where is this equal to 1? <clears throat> so we set this equal to 1. We need to multiply both sides by x squared. So we get x squared is equal to 4. We take the square root. What do we have to remember when we take the square root? The plus and the minus. Okay, but actually you would get lucky in this case uh, because negative 2 is not in our interval. Okay, negative 2 is not in our interval. So really uh, the only one that we're concerned about here, c equals 2 would be our answer. Negative 2 is not in our interval. Okay, now just for practice here, let's find the equation of the tangent line at that c value. So that means we need the slope. Well, we know the slope. It's 1. That's what we were trying to find. We were trying to find where is the slope 1. So the slope is 1. So f prime of 2 is 1. And we need f of 2. So that's 5 minus 4 over 2, which is 5 minus 2, which is 3. So our tangent line would be y minus 3 is equal to x minus 2, because the slope is 1. And since it's very easy to do, let's go ahead and add the 3. So that would be y equals x plus 1. This problem says two stationary patrol cars equipped with radar are five miles apart on a highway. As a truck passes the first patrol car, its speed is clocked at 55 miles per hour. Four minutes later, when the truck passes the second patrol car, its speed is clocked at 50 miles an hour. Prove that the truck must have exceeded the speed limit of 55 miles per hour at some time during the four minutes. Okay, so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to figure out, well, what was his average velocity over this interval? Okay, this is a mean value theorem problem because if we find his average velocity, that means at some point in time on that interval, his instantaneous velocity had to equal that average. Okay, that average, the mean value theorem, average value theorem. Okay, at some point in time, his instantaneous velocity had to be equal to his... Um, uh, average velocity. So let's find his average velocity. Um, at the second patrol car, he's going 50. At the first one, he was going 55. And it was over an interval of four minutes. Oh, wait, hang on. What am I doing? That's not right. I need to do, um, totally lost my train of thought. We were right with the 50 minus 55, but we can't put it over 4 because those are miles per hour. 4 is in minutes. So 4 minutes out of an hour is 1 15th of an hour. There we go. Okay. Problem solved. So 50 minus 55, an 
actually that should be no that's good okay so negative 5 over 1 over 15 is negative 5 times 15 over 1 which gives us negative 75 miles per hour is his negative or is his average uh, velocity okay now it's negative just because of the direction here okay um, so we're not really concerned about that we're just concerned about speed okay um, so anyways his average velocity of this interval is 75 miles per hour so that means at least somewhere on this interval he had to have been traveling 75 miles per hour um, so he was definitely speeding in order to cover that amount of distance in that amount of time. He couldn't have done it. Um, you could have also thought, what were you going to say, Seth? I was going to say, like, how can you just prove that he went over what he said in that amount of time you couldn't get that? Yeah. Well, because you also, if you think about it, five miles apart on the highway, and he did it in four minutes. So that means he's traveling more than a mile a minute which is at least 60 miles per hour. So that's another way of looking at it. But <clears throat> this is why it's a mean value theorem problem. Because if we can find his average velocity over the interval, at some point in time, he had to have been traveling at least that, um, that velocity somewhere on that interval. Okay. 